Okay, we didn't finish our study last week on the prophetic end time generations. The prophetic end time generations. And we were looking at the story of two brothers. Because the Lord Jesus gave us two generations to watch. Concerning his coming. It is no coincidence that he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be when the Son of Man will come. And as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be when the Son of Man is coming. It's no coincidence at all. There's a, there's a reason why he told us to watch those generations. There are things from those generations that are a type of how it, be, how it will be in the end time. A proper student of the Bible can study these two generations, the generations of Noah and the generations of Lot, and understand events that will happen at the end of time. He didn't tell us to watch the days of Abraham. He did not even tell us to watch the days of Moses. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. That means those days are prophetic. If you understand properly what transpired in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, you can also understand what will transpire in the end of time. And then you can be certain that you are at the end time. Praise the living God. So that was what we were looking at last week. And we saw several things. In the days of Noah, we said, um, we gave different points. Giants in the earth and several other things we said. If I can recap. Okay. We said there were giants in the earth in those days. It typed something. Increase in violence, wickedness, and corruption. We saw the marriage of the sons of God with the daughters of men. We saw increase in artificial beauty of women. And we saw the increase in population. And we were able to bring these things out clearly. The same things are happening in our own generation. And in the days of Lot, we saw that there was a rise in fornication. As if that was not enough, homosexuality pervaded the whole society. And then homosexuals also had more rights than normal people. And that's exactly what is going on today. Over 24 countries around the world have legalized gay marriage. And then many more countries, they have no law against it. And they have no law for it. In other words, they can do whatever they want. And then these homosexuals have what they call their pride. I told you of um, an, a, a story that made the news some time ago. How a baker was sued. Because he was not going to bake a cake for gays who wanted to get married. A Christian baker. So they are having more rights in the society. That is what we are seeing. Praise the living God. But now let's move on. We didn't finish this story. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 6. The days of Noah. Despite all this. Despite all the events that happened in the days of Noah. Despite how corrupt the world was. And God passed judgment that in 120 years time. I will wipe off man from the face of the earth. The Bible says something in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8. Verse 8 of Genesis chapter 6. It is something very significant. Can we read it together? But Noah did what? Noah did what? He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now let's understand what happened. Let's read on. Verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in generations. And Noah walked with God. Now... Verse 9 is not a continuation of verse 8. Verse 9 is a summary of Noah's life. Go back to verse 9. It was not because Noah was good that Noah found grace. I need to emphasize that. So this is a summary. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and Noah was perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Now, how did he end this? How did he end perfection? How did he end justification? And what did he do? That that language was used that he walked with God. What did he do? It is a summary of his life. Noah was a just man. What made him just? Noah was perfect. What made him perfect? Noah walked with God. What made him walk with God? It is not, it is not because of these things that Noah found grace. This is a summary of his life. Now let's pick up the history from verse 10. Let's pick up from verse 10. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Am, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt. Now, we are back to the storyline now. So just follow. We are back to the storyline. 
The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark. And shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. The breadth of it 50 cubits. The height of it 30 cubits. A window shall thou make to the ark. And in a cubit shall thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shall thou make it. Behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven. And everything, everything that is in the earth shall die. Verse 18. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. Of fowls after their kind, of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them. Now, can we all read verse 22 together? Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. I allowed us to read the full story so that we can understand what I want to say. When the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of God, what was the grace that Noah found? And like I said, when he says he was perfect and he walked with God, it was not because Noah was good that he found grace. Praise the living God. Grace is unmerited. We describe grace as unmerited favor, God's kindness to you. Noah did not do anything to receive the grace of God. Are you with me? He said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. That's a type of grace. You don't do anything to merit God's grace, to receive God's grace. Grace is unmerited. Praise the living God. So when we see such a language in the Bible that Noah found grace in the eyes of God, that means God did something for Noah. Not that Noah ain't anything. Praise God. Now, if I may ask, what was the grace that Noah found? Let's take the story very well. God said he's going to destroy the earth. The earth was corrupt. God saw the ways of man and God concluded in his heart that he will wipe off man. He even gave a date. In 120 years time, man will cease to exist. Nobody knew what God wanted to do. Nobody knew the mind of God. But God came to Noah and revealed something to him. Praise the living God. God came to Noah and passed an information to him. God came to Noah and gave him a knowledge, a revelation. Then what happens? Noah now knows what God wants to do. Noah knows that the world is coming to an end. Not only did Noah know that the world was going to end, God also gave him the way of escape. Somebody say amen. So we are saying Noah found grace. What was the grace that he found? That knowledge that Noah received from God, that is the grace. Are you with me? Is somebody getting it? The knowledge that Noah received from God, the knowledge that the world is coming to an end and the only way you can escape that you will not be destroyed is for you to do this. That knowledge was the grace that Noah received. Somebody say amen. Praise God. Noah must have had brothers and sisters who did not know anything about what God revealed to him. Are you with me? People were in the generation of Noah living life. That's why Jesus said they married, they gave a marriage, they continued life as if nothing was happening. But what, there was a man that had knowledge that that world was coming to an end. There was a man that had an information, a revelation, a knowledge that that world was coming to an end. And that the only way of escape is for him to do something. 
That knowledge he had, that was the grace that Noah found. Praise the living God. I'm emphasizing this because we are trying to look at what made Noah righteous. Hallelujah. God did not only reveal that the world was going to end to Noah. God even gave him the way of escape. He told him to do what? Build an ark. Brethren, are you following the Bible story? Not only did he say build an ark, he even gave him the measurements. He gave him the measurements. That was what we just read. If Noah said, oh, God said I should build this ark with this type of wood. Why will you tell me to build such an ark with this wood? I will use another type and I will put gold. I will put silver. I will make my ark more beautiful. What would have happened, brethren? That ark will sink. It will sink like Titanic. How many can remember Titanic? It will sink like Titanic. God gave him specifics. Gave him dimensions. Gave him measurements. Praise God. And what happened? Verse 22 of Genesis 6. For you to see what made Noah righteous. Praise the living God. Verse 22, Genesis chapter 6. The Bible says what? Thus did Noah. According to what? According to all that God had commanded him. So did he. This was what made Noah righteous. Praise God. Now what are we learning from it? Grace, 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 grace. That you have received grace doesn't mean you are righteous yet. Praise God. That you have received grace does not mean you are righteous yet. Praise God. Your response to grace is what procures righteousness for you. Now, Noah received the knowledge not because he was good. If Noah, despite the knowledge he had that the world was coming to an end and that the only way of escape was for him to construct an ark, if Noah did not act on that revelation, would he have been saved, brothers? Praise God. So, what will that knowledge profit him? Hallelujah. The Bible says in Titus chapter 2 verse 11, let's understand something. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto who? The grace of God that bringeth salvation appeared to all men. What did the grace do? Next verse. Doing what? No, no, no. Some people are not following. The grace is doing what? The grace is doing what? Grace that brings salvation is doing what? Grace is passing a knowledge to you. Grace is teaching. Now, that that grace has appeared to you does not mean automatic salvation. If you are not responding to what grace is doing, you cannot be termed righteous. You cannot be declared righteous. The grace that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that. So, the grace that brings salvation is a teaching grace. It's bringing knowledge to you. Your response to that knowledge is what makes you righteous. Are you with me? Your response to the knowledge that grace brought you is what makes you righteous. The grace that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that. The first work of grace is what? Revelation. That is what we are saying. The first work of grace is revelation. You receive that knowledge, that revelation. If you don't act accordingly, you cannot be declared righteous. That's what we see in the life of Noah. I will destroy the world. I will destroy mankind. I'm bringing a flood of water to drown the earth. Noah, I want to use you. I want to save you. Do this and be saved. If Noah had refused to build an ark, he would have drowned. Not only so, if Noah had decided to build the ark by his own measurement, he would have sunk. And we see many people building their ark by their own measurements today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Grace has appeared to us. Any man or woman that has believed that Jesus is the way, that person has received grace. Praise God. Because there are many people in the world that don't believe in Jesus. That thing that makes you know that Jesus is the way is a work of grace. And that is the first work of grace, revelation. 
You come to an awareness that Jesus is the way. You believe on him. But that is not automatic salvation. Are you with me, brethren? There are other works that grace is supposed to do in your life before you can be said, before it can be said of you that you are saved in this generation. Are we understanding the life of Noah? Noah found grace. Noah was a just man. Noah was a perfect man. Now, let's read that, that story. Let's continue. Let's see at what point in that story that God said Noah became righteous. Genesis chapter 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Brethren, this was 100 years according to Bible timeline. This was 100 years after God spoke to him to build an ark. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. Why? Can we read the next statement? For thee have I done what? Seen righteous before me in this generation. Praise the living God. Why did he see him righteous? Go back to chapter 6 verse 22. Why did God say Noah was righteous? Thus did what? According to what? Are you seeing the connection? Grace is unmerited, but righteousness is end. Are you with me? Grace is unmerited, but righteousness is end. Amen. Grace is unmerited. You did not do anything for God to reveal Jesus to you. You did not do anything for God to come and let you know that he loves you, reveal Jesus to you. But that is not automatic salvation. Praise God. Your response to the grace that came to you is what will make you righteous. It is true that out of the millions of people on the earth in the time of Noah, only Noah knew what God wanted to do. Only Noah knew that the world was coming to an end. Only Noah knew the way of escape. But that itself was not righteousness. If Noah had not acted on what God revealed to him, Noah cannot be called righteous. Brothers and sisters, even we in Bright Assembly Church, many of us believe the end time message. You have come to believe that this is the way. Give me that old time religion, the original life, the original way. That you have believed the end time message does not mean you are righteous. Praise God. What are you doing with the message given to you? Praise the living God. That is why James said, not the hearers of the word are just before God. But what? The doers of the work. The word of God for our salvation demands a response from you. The word of God revealed for our salvation demands a response from you. Not because you know it are you saved. Not because you know it are you justified. It is because you acted upon it. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. What has that knowledge done in your life? That is what you should talk about. Are you with me? So it is not that Noah, no, it was because Noah acted on what God revealed to him. The life of Noah is, the, is like the life of mankind generally. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But among all that have sinned, God is revealing Jesus the way to some of us. Just as God went to Noah, it is not because we are good that God came to reveal Jesus to us. Many of us were wicked. Many of us were con concentrated sinners. Praise God. It was not because we were good that God revealed Jesus to us. That is why we sing songs like what? Amazing grace. Such love. The Bible said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it was not because Noah was good. God revealed his plan to Noah that destruction was coming upon mankind. And God showed him the only way to salvation. Praise God. So God has revealed the same to, to many people in the body of Christ today. You know that Jesus is the way. But are you walking in that knowledge? Are you building the ark of your salvation according to God's dimension? Praise God. There are two things that Satan will fight in the life of a believer. If Satan cannot stop you from receiving genuine revelation from God, he will stop you from acting on it. Those are the two things that Satan fights. 
Why do you think there is so much, so much confusion in the church today? Satan doesn't want people to know the true word of God. Because the word of God is what brings salvation to man. Right from the Garden of Eden, that was been his plan. Attack the word. God came and told Adam and his family, don't touch this fruit, don't eat of it. Satan came with a perverted version of the same word of God. As God said, a new version of the word of God, a new translation. He brought it and he fell for it. The same thing, that is Satan's plan. Because if you don't follow God's plan, God's word, you cannot obtain genuine salvation. Imagine you are Noah. God told you, build this ark this way. Build this ark that way. Make it three stories. The window, let the window be on top. Do it like this, do it like that. If Noah had failed to do exactly what God had commanded him to do, brothers and sisters, I'm still saying it. That would have been the first Titanic would have witnessed in the world. The boats would have gone under the, under the water. Praise the living God. So you can see the essence of revelation and the importance of acting on that revelation. That you know something about Jesus, that you know that Jesus is the way. It's not because you are intelligent. There are many professors who don't believe in Jesus. But you, you are convinced you know that Jesus, it is a work of grace. That is what revelation is. Praise God. But how are you acting on what God has showed you? Are you building your own boat by God's measurement? That is what we should look at in the life of Noah. So what is this telling us? There are many Christians that are carrying Bible who know that Jesus is the way. But they will sink. They will not make it in the rapture. Why? Because the boat was not built by God's design. When somebody comes and reasons the word of God, when somebody comes and brings a new doctrine from what the apostles taught us, when they come and preach contrary to the Bible, they are building by another measurement, not by God's measurement. Praise God. It is not for us to argue with them. No, we will keep preaching and telling them that what they are doing is contrary to the Bible. But the judgment will be what? When God will come for his bride and rapture his own away. We will see what will become of these other people. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7. What does it say? By faith. By revelation and application of that revelation. By faith. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. He did what? Can you see something? God warned him. But Noah moved. I don't think somebody is seeing it. God warned him, but Noah moved. God spoke to him, but Noah acted. He didn't do anything for him to merit God's voice. It is grace, unmerited. But that righteousness, that thing that made him saved, was his own action. His own response to the word of God. Hallelujah. Do we understand what we are bringing out this morning? Praise God. The first work of grace is revelation. God reveals Christ to you and the way to salvation. If you don't apply that knowledge, you can't be saved. Grace comes to you, but your response to grace procures salvation for you. Your response to grace ends your righteousness. Amen. So you see why all these people that say by grace, it is grace, it is grace, and they make it seem as if, you know, just anyhow, it is grace. That is a perverted grace. That is shame, not grace. The Bible says the grace of God that brings salvation, do what? As appeared to all men, teaching us that. So knowledge is necessary in the work of grace. Praise God. Let's see that scripture again. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 and 12. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Praise God. Verse 12. The grace is doing what? Teaching us that. 
Then he goes for that. Denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly. All these are the work of grace. If you say you believe in Jesus and the grace has appeared to you, but that grace is not teaching you all this. That grace is, is, not, is not complete. Praise God. So are we seeing the life of Noah as it was in the days of Noah? In this generation, let's now, now, now let's make it more, let's bring it home now. In this generation, seated here with me today are people that believe that Jesus is coming soon. Is that right? How many of us believe that the world is coming to an end? Okay, not everybody. It's not a problem. How many of us believe that we are at the end times? Anything will happen. Everybody will say, ah, I'm on an end time with you. This world is coming to an end. If you don't believe, the economy of Nigeria speaks is a prophecy that the world is coming to an end. Praise God. But how many of us know the way of escape? Okay. Hands are not coming up. And how many of us are walking in the way of escape? The knowledge we teach in this church is not for us to puff our head with Bible scriptures and history. It is to position us properly for homegoing. We are not doing Bible contender or Bible challenger when we preach sermons in this church. We are trying to create an awakening that Jesus is coming soon and that the only way you can go is according to what the Bible has said. Now, the ark that we are building is what? Christ in you, the hope of glory. The ark that we are building is the genuine baptism of the Holy Ghost that will make us like Jesus. Praise God. When somebody comes and tells you contrary to the Bible and tells you that the evidence of the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues, and we, those of us that were here on Friday, we saw what our pastor taught us and teaches you how to speak in tongues. Is that person building the ark according to God's measurement? Will that ark survive the flood? I think I have a good response here. Some people are understanding what we are saying. So you can see Satan's plan. I don't know if you are op your eyes are open to understand what I'm saying. Attack the revelation or stop them from acting, stop them from applying it. We have many teachers of the gospel today that preach. In fact, 99% of gospel preachers preach error in this generation. Can you see how, how, how serious this case is? Only eight people were saved in Noah's generation. Brothers and sisters, only a handful will go in the rapture. Let's never expect. That's why we say the rapture is not as dramatic as those films that we see. Let's never expect a great majority. The population of Christians in the world today are more than one billion. Don't think it's that one billion that will make it in the rapture. If one billion people disappear from the face of the earth, everybody will know. But when the rapture occurs, we are still saying it. It is a secret catch away. People will not know. A sister had a revelation about the rapture this week. <laughs> when she woke up, she was telling me, that was my wife. Just shouted from 3 a.m. or so. Now, she said, she came. She, she, heard, she heard the scream. No, they have gone. Pastor has gone. I was behind. She was behind. So the question is, why didn't you go? Brethren, she said in that dream, the Lord told her I was distracted by my phone. When she told me, I understood better. Ah, why didn't she go? She said, right there, before she heard that scream, she said, two young girls were insulting her in the church. It was a church. She was in the church. And she was so offended, annoyed with them. And she just, you know, he said it was because of that anger she lost in her heart against those people that were insulting her. That was why she missed the rapture. When she said that, my understanding changed. Praise God. Now, when God reveals some such dreams to you, it is not a prophecy, Olum, they will not go in the rapture. No. It's an evidence of his love. 
Now come, let him that ticket his stand do what? It's an evidence that I should go back and see whether I am building the ark by his measurement. He's trying to call my attention that come oh, look well and be certain of where you are standing. Brethren, that you pray in Jesus' name is not an automatic ticket to rapture. That you attend church service is not automatic tickets that you are going. No. You have to look at the word of God and know what he says. When we say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, we narrow it down. Yes. But the truth is, how come me and you have the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost you have is leading you differently from the Holy Ghost I have? Why is the Holy Ghost you have, sister, permitting you to wear trousers? And the Holy Ghost another sister has is saying you must not even come near. Do we, do we truly have the same Holy Ghost? And he might be even speaking to you. So when Apostle Paul made a statement like, let him that think it is time, take it less force, or continue to walk your salvation with fear and trembling. It's because this journey to heaven is a very serious one and it's dangerous. Praise the living God. We must be certain of where we stand. You must be sure that your life is constructed by God's design, which is the word of God. You must be certain that the little foxes, what the Lord was revealing to her through that dream was all little foxes that destroy the vine. It will not be big things like fornication. Little, little foxes that destroy the vine can deny us of home going. What was that saying? If truly you have the Holy Ghost, allow him perfect you. And if you truly have the Holy Ghost, perfection is not a choice. He himself will perfect you. Praise the living God. So we must be certain of where we stand. Now let's briefly look at something in the life of Lot also. Lot's, is, Lot's story is like that of Noah. We saw that the angel from verse 10, Genesis 19 from verse 10. Let's take a little reading. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut to the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Let's move on. And the men said unto Lot, As thou hear any besides, son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. Why? Now see, we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Now Lot has received what? grace. He now knows that Sodom will be destroyed. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons in law which married his daughters and said up, get you out of this place for the Lord will destroy this city. But he did what? It seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. And when the morning arose, the angels esteemed Lot saying, arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here. Because he had other daughters. Thy two daughters which are here. Lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city. And while he lingered, there's something interesting here. The Lord did what? Laid hold upon his hand. The man laid hold upon his hand. And upon the hand of his wife. And upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Praise God. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad. That he said, escape for the life. Gave him a message. Look not behind thee. Don't stay in the plain. Escape to the mountain lest you be consumed. And, and so on and so forth. Praise God. Now let's understand this story. Grace came to Lot and his family. Even if the Bible says that he was not doing what they were doing in Sodom. The fact that he's living there. Why was he living there? He had a choice to have packed out. But all the way, grace came to him. That's revelation. It came through the way of revelation. Now Lot knows that Sodom will be destroyed. And then the angels told him, run out of Sodom. When you even come out, don't stay in the plain. Run to the mountain. They went as far as saying, don't look behind. Lot was still delaying. An extra work of grace was done upon Lot and his family. The compelling grace. They forced him out. They compelled him out of Sodom. Praise the living God. But brethren, there's something I want to bring out. We used to say compel, compel. 
You, you saw the story. The angel of God forced Lot, his daughters and his wife, out of Sodom. God can only compel you to a limit for salvation. God can only compel you to a limit. Why didn't those men force them to the mountain? When they forced them out of Sodom, they left them and gave them a message. Escape for your life. So, you know, some of us believe in God for the Holy Ghost. You see the angel of God chaining people in the church. You see as if God is compelling some people, running after them. And you'll be thinking, wow, these people are too special. Say, ask God, they go and visit them with the Holy Ghost. Me, I've been fasting and praying. Brethren, compelling is not salvation. Compelling is supposed to make you position yourself for salvation. Are you with me? God cannot, no matter how much he forces you, he cannot give an unrepented sinner the Holy Ghost. Even if he changed the sinner yet. When he says repent and be baptized and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. That doesn't mean eh, somebody has not repented but is coming to church and the angel is chaining him. And you think, wow, see how God is giving this person the Holy Ghost. God has not given him the Holy Ghost. So God is compelling him to get his attention. An extra work of grace was done upon Lot and his family. The angels brought them out. Fine. See grace in action. God compelled him. Pulled him and his family out of Sodom. But it was left to them to continue. Do we understand? It was left to them to continue. A new message came. Escape for your life. Don't look back. Praise God. So when it comes to salvation, God can only compel us to a limit. It is expected that you take a choice and decide to continue with the Lord. That was why the Lord Jesus Christ made a statement. Remember Lord's wife. Lord's wife was compelled. Lord's wife received revelation that God was going to destroy Sodom. The angels went as far as pulling her out of Sodom. What was the sin of Lord's wife? She didn't continue with God. She did not continue with the message. Now, this is where I want to bring out something now to us. The four works of grace. Praise the living God. Lord's wife was compelled. She had the knowledge that Jesus, that God was coming to destroy the city. And the angel brought her out. That knowledge she had is the first work of grace. For us, for our salvation in this generation, grace will take us through four processes. Grace will take us through four stages. It is until that fourth stage that you can speak of eternal security. Until you get to that fourth stage, don't be quick to say, once saved, I'm eternally saved. Praise God. And that's what we've been looking at for the past weeks. The first work of grace is what? This is not right. Sorry. The first work of grace is what? Revelation. It's not justification. It's revelation. The first work of grace is not justification. The first work of grace is revelation. Now, let's, let's, let's understand something. I said that awareness that makes you know that Jesus is the way. That thing that makes you know that Jesus is true and Jesus is the way is a revelation you have. And it is by the grace you receive from God. The first work of grace is revelation or knowledge. The second work of grace for us is what? Justification. Now, justification, forget the big grammar, is the process by which you stand before God as if you have never sinned. Justification is the process by which God wipes away your sins. And you stand before him as if you have never committed any sin. It is at the stage of justification that you can say, my sins are gone. Where are they? God cannot see them again. You can remember, but God cannot see your sins anymore. You are justified. Now, if you decide that, okay, I'm now justified. This is where I want to stop with God. You are not yet saved. It is not enough that God justifies you. God must also sanctify you. God must cleanse you. 
That is where we speak of a new heart and a new spirit. Then to seal up your work of salvation, God gives you what? The Holy Ghost. Praise the living God. Those are the four works of grace. I'm bringing this out because of the story of Lot's wife. Lot's wife had a revelation and she came out of Sodom. But she looked back. Then Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Praise God. So truly, there are people that can come out of the world and start their work with God. And then years later, you are seeing them. They are worse than they used to be. What happened? In our language, we say they have backslided. You might be correct, but the truth is they were not saved. The work of salvation was not completely done in them. Amen. God began a work, but salvation is not yet salvation until God seals you with his Holy Ghost. Are we together? The sealing of the Holy Ghost signifies a finished product. The sealing of the Holy Ghost signifies that the work is done. The sealing signifies that you are now is. It is at that point that you can say you are eternally saved and secured. Amen. As it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. What are we seeing? That means many Christians that came out of Sodom to escape for the rapture we will not make it. Because like Lot's wife, the work of salvation was not done completely in them. They looked back. Praise God. Lot's wife came out of Sodom by God's grace. She came out. We saw that she came out. She was told to escape for her life. Continue. But at what point did she fall? At what point did she fall? At the looking back. And she became what? She became a memorial of people that will start with God and will not make it to the promised land. A pillar of salt. Hallelujah. That's what we are seeing in the generation of Noah and in the generation of Lot. To buttress what I said about the four works of grace, let's read Ezekiel chapter 36 from verse 24. Ezekiel 36 from verse 24. For I will take you from among the Eden. This is God. Especially that first work of grace. He does not even demand anything from you. He just gives you. But then he expects you to continue now that you have received knowledge. I will take you from among the Eden and gather you out of all countries. And will bring you into your own land. That's revelation. The taking out of the Eden. Bringing out of the world. Then will I sprinkle clean, sprinkle clean water upon you. This is justification now. And you shall be clean from all your feediness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. It's justifying you now. Then what next? A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of your, heart of your flesh. And give you an heart of flesh. Sanctification. A new heart and a new spirit. It is after that he says what? I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Those are the four processes, the four stages, the, the works that grace does in us, the four processes for our salvation. This is why we say in this ministry that salvation is a process. Don't let anybody tell you that, say after me, then you are saved. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me, and now I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Cancel my name from the book of death. There is no book of death. I write my name from the book of life. I accept you today as my Lord. They will even add personal savior. And then they will tell you it is wrong. Salvation is a process. Praise God. You believe in Jesus. You, are, you have accepted him as, a, as your Lord. Revelation. The next stage is for you to truly repent and be correctly baptized in Jesus' name. That is, the, that is the way God justifies us. True repentance and water baptism in the name of Jesus. That's what justifies us. The God cleanses us with his word. You cannot say now you have given your life to Christ, you have been baptized in Jesus' name. And then you still look like an Egyptian. 
you still look like an Egyptian. You still look like the world. When Moses ran from Pharaoh and went to Midian and helped the daughters of Jethro, <laughs> their father asked them, who helped you? They said, an Egyptian. So God could not use him then. He still looked like an Egyptian. But after spending 40 years in the wilderness, he now looked differently. He was no longer looking like an Egyptian. Then God could now appear to him and say, Moses, go down to Pharaoh. You can't come out of Egypt and you say you have been baptized in the Red Sea and you are still looking like an Egyptian. God must do the work of cleansing upon you. You know, there are many Christians that see, see you in the rapture. And if I check your phones today, what I will see is, yeah, me see you, lo, 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 yeah, me see you. In the phones of some people, that's your ringing tone. Praise God. That's the ringing tone of some people here. Yeah. You are, you, and, and when pastor carries the mic and say, see you in the rapture, they will jump up and shout. <laughs> We are supposed to be singing. I will not see you in the rapture. I can't see you in the rapture. Because there are still things that will hinder us from going in the rapture. I still say it. A Christian cannot have come out of Egypt. And God has sanctified you, cleansed you and filled you with the Holy Ghost. And you still enjoy worldly entertainment. It's a lie. I'm not saying some of us are not doing it. But that's evidence that something is still wrong. If you still have pleasure, you can comfortably sit down and watch Hollywood and Hollywood and Bollywood. Something is still wrong. I'm telling you the truth. Something, you are still looking like, a, something is still wrong. Forget it. That you can comfortably have David Doe and whiskey songs on your phone. You can have worldly songs that you can sing along to. Something is still wrong. So let's not speak rapture by mouth. Praise God. When she told me that my phone distracted me, I understood better what she meant. I understood better. In fact, before that revelation came, I was already making adjustments. Don't worry, I will not expose my own self before everybody. Everybody knows their own self. Let's get there. That's all matters. I understood better what she meant. I, I knew what she meant. Praise the living God. Praise God. So you must be sure. You must be sure that God has taken you through these four processes. That God has brought you out of the world. That's a fact because you already believe in Jesus. That is not the problem. And then, of course, the people I'm speaking to, everybody here has been baptized in Jesus' name. Fine. But what about the next stage and the next stage? Are we still looking back like lost wife? Have we truly received a new heart and a new spirit? Christians... Still comfortably lie. Christians still comfortably show off and exhibit pride. Christians still comfortably nurse hatred and anger in their hearts. Even in a church like this, it is evidence that something is wrong. Be sure that God gives you a new heart and a new spirit and that you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. Remember lost wife. Don't look back. Praise the living God. Justification, sanctification, revelation, justification, sanctification, and the Holy Ghost baptism. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. What does he say? Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, do what? Walk out your own I love that word, your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, the picture is not that you have salvation and you lose it. No. But be diligent to make your calling and election sure. Be diligent that you have received the Holy Ghost, that God has taken you through the four processes. And you can be sure you are saved and eternally saved. Praise the living God. So the generation of Noah and the generation of Lot ends with this admonishment. Let's not be like lost wife that looked back. And let us be like Noah. That built the ark. By the measurements that God gave him. Don't come to Jesus desiring to decide how you want to serve God. This is how I serve my God. That is evidence that salvation is not your portion. This is I know how I walk with my God. This is how I walk with my God. 
Be sure that you walk with him and serve him by his instructions, by his word. Then you can be certain that the boats, the ark that you are building will make it and survive the flood. Can we put our hands together for the Lord Jesus? Let me take two questions. Anybody? Two questions or to clarify any misunderstanding. Okay, we have a brother. With, please, rise up, sir. So. Okay, you can give mommy before they get to the brother. Let's hear mommy. Shalom, brethren. Shalom, ma. We have seen that salvation has four processes. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, you know, uh, like in this church now, we are in the perfection stage. Yes, ma'am. Those people in the, in the, maybe in churches where they are still at the third stage, can they make heaven, sir? Now, <laughs> You are asking a very important question. That is where Luke 17 verse 34 comes in. Your question, mommy, is that can those in the denominations make the rapture? That's your question, simply put. I will answer you boldly, no. Why, we, why do we say the rapture has started in this church? Luke 17 from verse... 34. I tell you that in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered him and said unto him, Where Lord? And he said what? Wheresoever the carcass is, the body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. The truth is, God has left whatever stage they are. Now we are talking of the church corporate now, the church universal. Just like justification through Luther, sanctification through Wesley, restoration of the gifts through William Seymour. It is God on the move. If God moves and you fail to move on with God, you cannot say you are in the light anymore. The light shines from the what? East to the west. When the light leaves the east, will there still be brightness in the east? I give mommy the mic. She's the one that asks. When the light leaves the east and sets in the west, when the light is now in the west, what will be in the east? Darkness. Darkness. So that answers it. That answers it. That is why we must move with God when God is on the move. You must move on with God through revelation. Revelation is progressive. What you are saying is very true. When they came out of the Catholic system and God gave the doctrine of justification, that was God's righteousness for that day. But the same God moved on. So if they, anyone that truly had life, we move on with God. All of us sitting there, we, were, we are all from one denomination or the other. Is that right? I gave my life to Christ in redeem. But when I saw that there was a light, I came out because there was a little light in me already. So, when, when the light lives there, there can be no more life there. So, nobody in the denomination can make the rapture. It's a fact. It's not political talk. It's a fact. Yes, sir. Final question. Uh, I want to ask, the people who got saved and uh, properly baptized, if uh, anything happened, they draw back. If they have to come back again, that baptism, does it still count or will they rebaptize? You mean somebody repented and properly baptized? Yes. If he falls back again and comes back? Yes. Uh, I believe he has already believed. He just maybe fell into a sin or something. The baptism still stands. What he needs is repentance. But if he did not truly repent in the first place and just went for water baptism and now has truly repented, then he should truly go and rebaptize because he didn't baptize correctly in the first place. Okay, more questions will be taken tomorrow night by 7 p.m. During our Ask the Pastor session. And the Lord will bless us as we connect in Jesus' name. Can we put hands together for the Lord as we rise on our feet? Amazing grace, how sweet the sounds. Let's be on our feet, church, as we take this beautiful song, this early morning.
everybody now. Yeah. 